how we built the doors and windows for our bear hog. Oh, yeah, and stick around if you'd like to see it in more detail. So the doors are something that many Bearhawk builders seem to do differently. We decided to build our doors pretty close to the way the designer recommends to build them, mostly because pretty much everything came with the kit to do it that way. The kit comes with the window frame and all of the aluminum trim pieces needed. The pieces that need bent come pre-bent as well. This basic design has an upper piece that we're referring to as the window that will hinge at the top and swing up and then latch on a piece underneath the wing. The bottom piece that we're referring to as the door hinges in the front and will swing out open like that. The first thing we did was attach the outside trim pieces. These pieces do two things. First, they hold the window on the outside so it doesn't fall out. And second, they overlap the formers on the fuselage. So when we're finishing, we can put some weather stripping there to help seal things up. To install the outside trim pieces, we first marked the center line and then marked the locations to drill. This is where bonafide builders would use a spacing fan. Next, we drilled all the holes in the outside trim pieces. Then we carefully lined the center pieces up on the center of the window frame tube and clamped it in place making sure these holes are exactly in the middle of the tube will help keep the trim piece nice and flat once it's riveted in place. I clamped it in place and then drilled the holes in the frame, adding Clecos as I went. After all of the holes were drilled from the front, top, and aft pieces, we cut the top pieces to length. For pieces like this, we cut them a little long and then would sneak up on the line a little at a time by grinding small amounts off, frequently checking the fit until the pieces would fit perfectly. The bottom piece is similar, but the bushing the door latch swivels in stands a little proud of the tubing. So we drilled and filed this area out until the piece would lay flat on the tubing. Once all four outside trim pieces were drilled, we trimmed the front and the aft pieces to length. Next, we cut the plexiglass. I marked the cut line using the window frame. Then I tried a couple of different ways to cut the plexiglass. One was the score and snap method. The second was using a cutoff wheel and a grinder. Both seemed to work fine, but I think I preferred the cutoff wheel, especially for shorter cuts. Once the plexiglass was cut, we clecoed the outside trim pieces in place, flipped the window, and set the plexiglass in place. The method we used to secure the plexiglass in the front windows was using the outside trim piece and then the inside trim piece to form a channel that the plexiglass then floats in. First, we cut the bottom piece with the joggle in it to length and set it in place. Next, we went around the frame, cutting the angle pieces to fit. Afterwards, I cut miters in the top two corners by cutting one piece 
and then marking the angle on the second piece. The bottom piece is riveted to the front trim piece. So next I drilled holes for the rivets to fasten them together. At this point we deburred everything and then pulled the protective plastic off of the aluminum. I'm sure it's best to paint pieces like this when you're set up to spray other components but instead we just sprayed them with some self-etching primer from a rattle can and then spray painted the small pieces that would be contacting the frame. Next, we riveted the outside and inside bottom pieces together. Then we just pop riveted the outside pieces to the frame. At this point, we were ready to fasten the inside trim pieces to the window frame. To make it easier to drill them in place, I used a small scrap piece of plexiglass to establish the correct channel width and then clamp them in place. This made it easy to maneuver a drill as I worked my way around. To secure the inside trim pieces to the frame, I'm using small sheet metal screws. I won't permanently install the plexiglass yet, so I can take it out to paint the more visible pieces later on. But when we install the plexiglass for the last time, we'll put some sealing putty in the channel to help weatherproof it. The standard Bearhawk door is skinned with aluminum. I clamped my door skins in place exactly where I wanted them, marked two holes, drilled them, and then clicoed them to lock the position. Next, Amanda marked the center of each tube and drilled holes every two inches. After the holes were all drilled, I found a friend with a break large enough to put a 90 degree bend at the top of my 40 plus inch door skins. Hindsight, I should have done this first as the crease wasn't placed perfectly on either of the doors. After the crease, I trimmed off the excess and then cleaned up the cut with a file. A standard Bearhawk door would look something like this, but we decided to put a little window in the front of the bottom door. Many builders decide to skin the entire lower front door with plexiglass, so I guess we kind of took the middle ground. To create a channel for the plexiglass to sit in, we made a frame in SketchUp and then had tailored printers make them with a 3D printer. I'm sure sheet metal savvy guys can do this cheaper and maybe lighter with aluminum, but this was by far easiest for me. Next, we used the frames as a stencil to mark the plexiglass and then cut them out with a grinder. The length was a little too long for this company's 3D printer, so I had them print them in two pieces and then we super glued them together. Really the glue just makes it a little easier to handle and line up, but it won't really serve much of a purpose once fastened to the door skins. Then we marked where to cut the door skins, drilled a starter hole, and cut them out with a jigsaw. Afterwards I cleaned up the holes with a file. Next, I drilled holes all the way around the frames, 
clamped them in place on the door skins and drilled through the door skins. Finally, the plexiglass could be placed between the frame and the door skins. I'm going to wait and give the door skins a proper paint job before permanently fastening the frames to them. To finish up, we installed the lower door pins. We marked on the door formers where the pins hit and then drilled them out. Then we put a spring on the pin and made sure that it provided the resistance we desired and then we bent the tabs over to hold everything in the tube. As an aside, many Bearhawk builders install gullwing doors or seaplane doors that they build themselves. Rob and Nev both have um, beautiful examples of that. I'll, I'll link their videos below if you'd like to check those out. We decided to go with just the standard Bearhawk door because it came with the kit. And also, I like the idea of having your arm rested on the door um, while you're traveling along. And you're supposed to be able to fly with these doors opened up at, at fairly high speeds and still be safe. So uh, I kind of like these doors. And so I thought we'd give them a try. If I was gonna self gray or work on the door, I'd say it's probably a B minus. The good news is we'll get a lot more practice working on the cowling and stuff. So if we're all said and done and this thing's flying, we'll hopefully be better and we can redo it if we want. But I'm pretty happy with it right now. That's all I got for this one. So we'll see you in the next one. Dakota, go get my marker.